Well, howdy, 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 near you, senior citizen here. Greetings, boys, girls, and all of our non binary friends, and welcome to this a brand new day. A brand new day in which I have therapy today, so of course, kind of in a rush. And of late, I've been finding it difficult to start on time. I like to start recording at 7, but of late, it's been hard to do that. And I'm starting like today at 7.15. Other days, it's been closer to 7.30. Now, I don't know what's going on in those other days, and I'm not too sure exactly of why this is happening. Now, today, I actually kind of know. Ugh, trying to sleep in the heat is bad. I have the heat-related insomnia. I do not do heat well. And so, last night, even with three fans, one in the window, one at the foot of my bed, and one at the side of my bed, I was still too hot. Woke up around midnight with with just heat-related anxiety slash insomnia. So that was joyous. But I was able to cool down, and then I moved my one of my bottom fans a little bit more, and then was able to go to sleep. And then three o'clock woke up because my cat jumped up and knocked the fan over the large box fan and with a huge thump and a crash so I had to wake up turn on the light adjust that thing and fix it and then I was able to get back to sleep so thumbs up and while I woke up early and then just stayed in bed an extra half hour as well uh, <laughs> I am up I'm moving I'm trying to do things as best I can so that's uh, all the thumbs up as stated I have therapy today so Hopefully, some of the things, if I can remember the stuff that I was thinking about yesterday, I'll talk about now, and then I'll be able to talk about with with my therapist when when I start my, my session today. So, I have absolutely next to zero written down on my topics list, and I just have not been able to function brain-wise today. So, joy. And when I got back last night, because it was so hot, I had to go walkies late, and it was actually dark when I got back, because now it's starting to get dark at, you know, night. So it's, and when I get back, I'm just tired and exhausted. I can't really do anything, so I didn't write anything down on my topics list. Yay! So, some of the stuff that I'm going to talk about with my therapist, though, is with the fuller understanding, I think I've talked about it here without talking about it with my therapist, I had talked to them before about how when I was married to my wife, I could actually do things. And I came to the fuller understanding through talking about it here and being on walkies that, you know, when you're on the autism disorder spectrum, ASD, the diagnoses, they don't look upon it as high functioning or low functioning or anything like that. They just look upon it as level of support needed. And my wife was my level of support. My level of support needed is I need support. I don't need a lot. I just need a tiny bit so that I can be able to do the things that I need to do. And she didn't know that she was my support. I didn't know that she was my support. But we were like the perfect match together. I needed support and to function properly. She needed someone to help her live because two years into our 12-year marriage and well from that point on she started spending about six months at a minimum sometimes a little bit more sometimes less that many months in the hospital so there were some months uh, years that she would be only four months in the hospital some months mo some years she would spend seven or so months in the hospital so it was rough and she required a lot of physical help and just stuff and I was there and that it's almost as if I happened to exist in the perfect universe for that union out of all of the many multi multi universes out there where she needed somebody that would be able to help her when things went down and I needed someone who could help me function support wise and when things went south and she her health went very very bad i mean most most marriages do not survive that 
I mean, it's not a judgment or value call, but most marriages do not survive a chronic illness or anything like that. It's just too much and you fall apart in the relationship. Again, not a judgment or value call. It happens. And it happens most of the time. But with us, when this happened, she needed help more and I needed her more and we just became a tighter and tighter orbit until it was just the two of us. And then of course, when she was gone, well, there weren't my support and the person that I had fallen in love with. So, <sighs> still recovering, but hey, that's life. It happens, I'm getting there. You know, thumbs up. But that's, that's how I discovered my, my level of support necessary. While I was just out walking and figuring things out, putting things together with the information that I find when I'm trying to learn things. So, hey, thumbs up. She's been gone for seven years. My parents have been gone for some, and I'm trying to process all of this stuff and my Emotions Haver has been online for a lot longer than my emotions processor, so I'm backlogged and it's exciting. Joy. But that's life. That's life. So there's a lot of stuff I want to talk to my counselor slash therapist. He's an actual therapist. Um, occasionally I say counselor because that those words are nearly synonymous in American English because our uh, I've mentioned this before. We have next to no support, social safety net support for any mental health issues. We used to have that. And then in the 1980s, Ronald Reagan became president of the United States, at which point pretty much every social safety net we've ever had vanished. They closed all the mental institutions where they had people who could not function in the outside world hospitalized. They didn't close them in a good way. They just shut them and anybody that was in there, they just pushed out onto the streets. And a lot of people just literally died on the streets because they couldn't function and they weren't given any help. They were just shoved out the doors and told bye. And so a lot of people died on the streets and there has been demonization of people with mental issues and it's not pretty which as stated before when I talked about this, one of the reasons I have been hesitant to actually use a lot of the words that I've been discovering actually applying to my life is because of American culture. So, talking with my therapist about that and that's going to be good. But I've also still been thinking on actual creative stuff. I mean, I am fascinated now, of course, by a whole bunch of different universes that I've thought of and would never write about, but are still fascinating to think of. And that's the thing. I may never write. I may never actually physically write. I've mentioned how it's with my ADHD going forward into the world is like having to cut my way through a forest of bamboo with a machete. But as I said to my med manager, that's fine. I don't mind sweating. I don't mind working out my muscles because for 58 years I've been stuck outside that forest. I've never been able to move. Yeah, now I get sore. Now I'm covered in sweat. Sure, it's work, but I'm moving. I am moving, so I don't mind that. But you add on things like my fibromyalgia fog, which makes it difficult to think at the best of times. And then there's the inability to have developed work and study habits and then I can't I don't have a full recharged battery when I go to sleep and wake up especially on nights when I can't sleep and a good good recharge good night of sleep my rechargeable battery charges up to maybe 75% max normal people charge up you know everyone's got issues but you're like 90 90% 90% plus on a good day I might make it up to 75% charge but I don't have good nights cat knocked over my fan and heat related anxiety slash insomnia so my batteries don't charge up that much and it's hard to see so I don't 
do things that require me to see, which means I also don't read. And so just writing is work. And after all these decades of not being able to do it properly, it's just, I spend a lot of time with the broad stroke stuff in my head, working on the worlds and the universes. And as I've mentioned, that's fine. You do not need to monetize your passions. If that sort of broad strokes work on fiction or whatever does the job for you, then do that. Do that. Be creative. Be happy in your creativity. But don't be sad that you're not able to do this other thing that really you're not that interested in doing. You don't have to make a living with the things that you enjoy. I enjoy the process of working stuff out in a universal level, on a world level, on world law levels, on figuring out all the stuff in the actual writing process. Yes, that's great. Being able to create something is like making a statue out of stone. When you knock away all the stone that's not there and you reveal something that is delicate and amazing. It is an incredible feeling, and it's the same with writing when you're able to do that. One of the other things, though, that I have never been able to do with writing because of my ADHD, when you write a story, you got to kind of live with that story because you don't just first draft it and it's done. Because if you just first draft a story, that's fine. Or first drafting, you got to get it done. But then you got to second draft it. And then you got to go through and rework it again and you just work on it until all the rough edges that you want gone are gone. You have other people that read your things to tell you when your blind spots failed you so you can fix it. I don't have anyone to share my fiction with and it's hard to actually write it out. I've never, never because of my ADHD been able to do second second drafts or any revisions. It is hard to even be able to have the mental stick to to even do first drafts. I used to be able to do this well when I was a drinker because I didn't realize that drinking slowed me down. I didn't know that I had ADHD. And so one of the things with getting drunk when I was a drinker was that there was that window where I was usefully drunk. I didn't even fully realize this but because I'd always known I had a window where I was useful with drunk drunkenness. I didn't realize it was because of the ADHD where that was like being medicated. So for a short period of time, I had that window where I got myself to it and I was functional. Problem was I would keep going and then I would pass up and out of the useful window and then because I didn't know it was there and I always drank always drank just to get drunk I didn't enjoy any of it I just wanted to get drunk I shot past that window of useful drunkenness so quickly I was never able to actually do anything with it so all my life I've been good at first drafting never been able to second draft I have occasionally taken writing classes and had people that have been able to read my stuff so I can work on it but that's decades ago. So yeah, I got all this stuff I want to write, but if I don't write it, that's fine too. That's kind of why I'm trying to do videos for the creative channel. I've been having my own issues because of mental stuff. I've been trying to do weekly uploads and I failed. So I got to try to appease the algorithm here soon by doing another video for that, which is good because I need to finish talking about my cosmic horror framework stuff. So thumbs up on that. And I've opened up 24 hours worth of comments in my community tab. And I'm going to go through and thank, well, however many people left me comments. Oh, excuse me. I haven't had 25 for quite some time. So however many there are, I will thank. And thank you, each and every one of you, for having left me comment. If I mispronounce a username, no disrespect is intended. I'm an American English speaker. <coughs> and even though I count American Sign Language on the fingers of this hand, with my depression, fibromyalgia, ADHD, THC use for pain. Oh, it's my memory is getting a whole lot better all the time. 
one day I'm going to reach a functional limit. But until that day, we have the Drunken Coward, thumbs up and thank you. We have Core Pogo, K-O-R-E, Pogo, thumbs up and thank you. ML, greatly appreciated. Nico Bands, hey, good to see you in the comments. King of Lee, thumbs up. Hi Phoenix, 1754, appreciated. Spooky 666, thumbs up and thank you. We have Elite, greatly appreciated. There is Roth, thumbs up and thank you. Boo, with a little kitty face, thumbs up. We have Katya Reads, greatly appreciated. DFX, thumbs up. Hellboy, like the name and thank you. DVR03, thumbs up and thank you very much. There is Johnny K, thumbs up. Not Starboy, thumbs up and thank you. You. And then there's Ice Damon. Greatly appreciated. Each and every one of you that leaves me comments. None of you have to do that. It is appreciated. Anybody that does so. Thumbs up and thank you very, very much. And of course, if you could check out my various links down below, I do have Twitter, Facebook, Patreon.com. And if you could become a Patreon.com patron like one of these beautiful and awesome people allowing me to keep a roof over my head, food in my belly, and pain medication so I can go out on walkies. Thank you, each and every one of you. I will also have, if you don't want to send money through the patronage, a PayPal link down below. And if you'd like to help me out without sending money, I do have an Amazon wish list link with things like cat food on it. I did get a box of cat food just the other day. It does not say who sent it. Whoever did so, thank you so very, very much. It is appreciated. the rest of this <laughs> derailed myself there <coughs> if you could toss me a like I appreciate all the positive validation I get for my existence and of course if you could hit the notification bell on the subscription button that would be very cool greatly appreciated a definite thumbs up well there's a lot more I wanted to talk about but I can't remember because I wasn't able to remember enough to put it on my topics list so another day things to talk about and that's a good thing as for the rest, if you watch my videos to the end, you know what I'm going to say, which is with the Kofefe bug raging around the world. With it in the United States, we're in a worse state than we were a year ago. Please, get vaxxed. Even if you are vaxxed, wear a mask around other people. Maintain your social distancing. Try not to touch your face. Wash your hands. It is not good anywhere in the world. Please be careful and be safe. So you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side. And well, quite frankly, I think that's a good thing. <laughs>